Chapter 36 Shri Sai Sacharita In Chapter 36 Dabalkar has described two wonderful leelas of the two gentlemen from Goa who came for Baba's darshan Baba receives dakshina of rupees 15 from one of them but refuses to accept 35 rupees from the other who offers it on his own accord then there is the story of gangu tai aurangbadkar who was barren for 25 years who comes to shirdi to seek baba's blessings shama then intervenes and forces baba to bless her with the coconut so she could have a child finally baba gives her the coconut with his blessings and a year later she has a baby boy now i shall narrate these leelas in detail the first gentleman was a poor man who vowed that if he got a job he would offer his first pay to lord dattatreya he did get a job for a salary of 15 rupees and subsequently he got promoted again and again and along with it received increments in his pay ultimately his pay was 700 rupees per month but with the prosperity he forgot his vow later he visited shirdi and baba asked him to give rupees 15 as dakshina which he readily gave and baba absolved him of his forgotten vow the other gentleman trusted his brahmin cook who served him faithfully for 35 years due to the bad influence of his friends the cook betrayed him and he stole his master's entire savings of rupees 30000 this he did by removing a laterite slab where the safe deposit box was fixed this he did whilst his master was sound asleep devastated by this the gentleman sat bemoaning his loss on the veranda a fakir who was passing inquired about his plight and advised him saying there lives in shirdi a great aulia vow to him to give up your favorite food mentally say to him i have given up eating my favorite food till i have your darshan the gentleman thus gave up eating rice a fortnight after that the cook on his own accord returned the money and begged to be forgiven but the gentleman forgot all about his vow then one day he saw baba in his dream and was reminded of his vow he set out to have baba's darshan but was unable to board the ferry boat to mumbai however a kind pun intervened and thus he got a seat and was able to reach shirdi and have baba's darshan then both of them tell shama with gratitude of how easily they got their wealth due to baba's infinite compassion and how he enabled them to visit shirdi and have his darshan and seek his blessings the next leela is about gangu tai aurangbadkar who was barren for 27 years and through shama's intervention baba blesses her with a coconut and she delivers a son a year later now i shall talk a little about the aurangbadkars and the persistence of his wife gangu bai a short biography of sakaram 
Tatyaji Aurangbadkar and his wife Gangubai is narrated by their grandson Dattatreya Vasudev Aurangbadkar. The Aurangbadkar's ancestral home was in Sholapur and they were goldsmiths by profession. Sakaram owned a jewelry shop and was famous for crafting ready-made jewelry. During that time, his clients were unable to purchase exquisite jewelry. Hence, they would come to Sakaram and explain to him the pattern and the type of jewelry they desired. Sakaram, with his expertise, ingenuity and dexterity, would create beautiful jewelry for them. He was respected for his righteousness and honesty. At that time, there were no financial banks, so Sakaram also had a pawn brokerage business. Thus his family was very affluent. In Sholapur, he was fondly known as Sakha Hari or the friend of Lord Hari. Tatatriya recalls, My grandfather had a noble personality. He was tall and well-built. He wore a feta and a coat on top of his dotar and walked in a majestic fashion. Sakaram was a pious person. At a young age, he could recite the Vishnu Sahasranam and every evening upon returning home, he would sit on the swing and recite it with devotion. At that time, it was a common practice for a man to remarry if his wife did not bear any children. Thus, Sakaram remarried and a son was born and he was named Vishwanath. Gangubai was affluent, wore a lot of jewellery and was always well-dressed. Nonetheless, she was extremely saddened by the fact that she was unable to conceive and everyone called her Vanjoti, a derogatory name for barren women. Society was very unkind to infertile women and treated them as a curse of society. Consequently, she was hurt and distraught and was unable to enjoy her affluence. So, she sought refuge in God. There was a temple of Lord Sri Ram in front of her home and Gangubai spent most of her time praying in that temple. She observed numerous vows like performing Rudra Abhishek to Lord Shiva during the holy month of Shravan. Gangubai would chant the thousand names of Lord Shiva while offering a thousand Bilvapatra to the Shivling. At the end of the holy month, she had a huge feast where everyone would come and dine. On every Purnima, she had a Satyanarayan puja performed in her home. Aurangbadkar's family deity was Renuka Devi, so Gangubai would climb on top of Mahurgad at midnight. In the darkness of the night, she would pick up the first stone that touched her hand and bring it home. She would apply ochre colour on it, and eyes and ears and a nose made of gold were fixed onto it. Then the stone would be adorned with jewellery and worshipped as a goddess. All these rituals are still conducted in their home even to this day. Even after observing all these rituals, fasts and vows, Gangubai was unable to conceive. As the gods did not come to her aid, she sought refuge in saints. Gangubai visited Hanumanabad and did seva in Manik Prabhu's sansthan. One day, while she was sweeping the floor, she found two pearls. Gangubai immediately returned them to Manik Prabhu. However, Manik Prabhu did not accept them and asked her to keep them. 
Gangubai took this as a good omen and returned to Sholapur. As Akkal Court was quite near Sholapur, Gangubai started visiting Swami Samar. There, she performed a lot of seva. Seva done with devotion never goes in vain. The turning point came when Das Ganu performed a kirtan in Sholapur. She and her family attended it. This had a tremendous effect on her, and as Das Ganu spoke of Baba's divinity, his compassion for the downtrodden and the numerous leelas that he performed for his devotees, she was filled with faith. After Das Ganu had finished the kirtan, she met him and inquired about Baba. Das Ganu reassured her, You go to Shirdi and prostrate at his feet. Your desire will definitely be fulfilled. Gangubai did not waste another moment and got permission from her husband to leave for Shirdi. Taking her stepson Vishwanath, she went to meet Baba. At Shirdi, she tried her level best to meet Baba and open her heart to him. This was specially difficult as there was always some person or the other present there. Then she sought Shama's help and finally her wish was granted. Gangubai and Vishwanath stayed in Shirdi for two months and her persistence paid off. Baba's promise came to fruition in 1911 and Sakharam and Gangubai were blessed with a baby boy. The baby was cute, with a rosy, fair complexion, but most importantly, he was a healthy baby. Gangubai basked in the joy of finally giving birth to a boy, and everyone around her was happy for her. Sakharam had decided that the baby would be christened by Baba. Thus, when the child was five months old, they took the baby to Shirdi. Baba placed the baby in his lap and blessed him with the name Ramakrishna and as Dakshina, Sakaram gave 500 rupees. However, Baba didn't accept it and it was later used to construct a stable for Baba's favourite horse, Sham Karna. In 1915, Gangubai had a son named Vasudev, but a year later she passed away. Thus, both her children were bereft of their mother's love. But as it was a large extended family, they were well cared for. Vishwanath's wife, Mathurabai, took good care of the children. The Sadguru surpasses the Kalpa Vriksh or the wish-fulfilling tree and Kamadenu or the celestial cow of plenty who bestows on the owner whatever he desires. Only after coming to Baba did Gangubai conceive and have children. Thus the Sadguru is superior and excels the Kalpa Vriksh and Kamdenu. In Chapter 36 of the Sri Sai Satcharita, OV 149, Shama says, Please look upon her graciously and put that coconut in the lap of a sari. By your blessings, many sons and daughters will be born to her. In OV 150, Shama says, Oh, we know the power and the marvel of your words. So priceless are they that a long train of children will follow on their own. It was only by Shama's unshakable faith in Baba and Baba's word that she was blessed with children. Hence, Baba's word is more powerful than the Kalpa Vriksh and Kamadenu. This Leela was taken from Sai Leela magazine, The Powerly Issue, 2010.
I shall now narrate some very interesting Leelas. Leela number one. He desperately prayed to Baba to help him. There was a devotee who was a clerk in the customs office. One day, a bundle of custom bills were checked and verified by the officer and given to him. He was sure that he kept them safely in the drawer of his desk. Knowing that the officer would recall them later, he wanted to keep them ready on his desk. But to his utter dismay, they were not to be found. He made a thorough search but could not trace them. He feared a reprimand or worse still, the loss of his job. So he prayed to Baba. That day passed without the officer asking him for the bills. The next day, rather scared, he went to the office and found the bills neatly placed on his table. He racked his brains as to who could have done this, as he was the last person to leave and the first person to enter the office. He remembered locking the office in the evening before leaving and opening it in the morning. Who but Baba could have entered the closed office and done this? This Leela is taken from Ambrosia in Shirdi, written by Rama Lingaswami. Leela number two. Do coconuts produce children? How can you be so superstitious? said Baba to Shama. Shama was pleading with Baba on behalf of Mrs. Aurangabadkar. He besieged Baba to give her a coconut and his blessings. Thus the barren lady might get a child. She will get a child in twelve months, said Baba. This is another coconut leela. A lady from Pune was desperate to go to Shirdi and seek Baba's blessings. But however hard she tried, her attempts failed, for some reason or the other. She was sure if she received a coconut from Baba, she would get a child. She was very sad and dejected and wondered about her future. One night she had a dream vision. Baba came and gave her a coconut as prasad. When she woke up and thought over the dream, it seemed so real that she looked around and lo, there was the coconut on her bed. She vowed that if she got a child, by this prasad, she would take the child to Shirdi. A year later, she delivered a male child. So she went with the child and gratefully laid him at Baba's feet. This Leela is taken from Ambrosia in Shirdi, written by Rama Linga Swami. Leela number three. Damodar Narayan Chandane and his family stayed in Shirdi for eight days. They lived in a mud hut and the floor was covered with a slurry of cow dung that had dried. His children, then aged eight and ten, had a wonderful time. One day, when we sat there, a wonderful Leela occurred. A barren couple came there to beg Baba for a child. But during the journey, the wife lost her nose ring. Mentally, she prayed, I don't care if I don't conceive, but I would rather get my nose ring back. Then they went to the Dwarkamai and sat silently before Baba. Baba did not ask them why they had come. Baba, as a blessing, gave them a coconut and asked them to eat it. Finally, the couple left and returned to the hut and broke the coconut, and lo, the nose ring 
was right inside the coconut. Excitedly, they took the ring to Baba, leaving the coconut behind. Baba saw them and shouted. Both of you came here and sat silently. I knew that you had no progeny and had also lost your nose ring. So I blessed you with a coconut for both things. But you found the nose ring and left the coconut behind and came here. Now both of you return to your hut and eat the coconut so that you will be able to overcome the problem that lies in your path. This Leela was taken from Sai Prasad Magazine, 1988 Deepavali issue. And this concludes the commentary on the chapter. Om Sai Ram